is the highest form of research, Einstein allegedly said. Today, play also happens in video games, and teachers use them in class or for homework. For this video, we teamed up with the folks at G2A, the world's largest marketplace for games, to learn about the three dimensions of game design, four things games can potentially teach us, and five video games that are great for learning, one of which is played at Harvard Business School. First, the three dimensions of video game design. Games typically range from simple to complex. They can be played in a single or multiplayer mode and can be played collaboratively or competitively. We can divide games along the spectrum of simple to complex and non-social to social. Simple single-player games include puzzles and jump-and-run games like Super Mario. Complex non-social games include the shooters like Far Cry or simulations like SimCity. Then there are simple multiplayer games like Guitar Hero or Need for Speed and games that are complex and social, such as Halo, Minecraft, or Among Us. Games can be competitive, cooperative, or both. Complex multiplayer games are usually most effective for learning. Now, on to the four things games can teach us. Video games can increase our cognitive abilities, boost our motivation, make us aware of our emotions, and strengthen our social skills. Games can increase cognition by strengthening particular areas of our brain. One meta-analysis showed that video games effectively teach mental rotation abilities and that such learning can be transferred to the real world. Logic and mathematical thinking can also be effectively learned through specific video games. Shooter games, for example, often train our understanding of relations among objects in space better than regular high school programs. Games can boost our motivation and warm us up for learning. Feedback loops that adjust to one's abilities keep players within what Vygotsky called the zone of proximal development. And as we learn that we advance through the process of trying, failing, and doing, we can develop a growth mindset. Some of the confidence we gain through games can be transferred to other aspects of life. There are emotional benefits, and some studies report a causal relationship between playing video games and improved mood. This makes sense! being that, according to uses and gratification theory, most of us seek diverse forms of media to manage our mental state. Putting the books aside for a short game break can therefore enhance our emotional state. One study reported that gamers often experience high levels of stress and, as a result, learn to manage their emotions. There can be social benefits as we form new relationships. In some games, we need to learn who to trust, how to communicate, and when to take the lead. Video games that are designed to reward cooperation promote pro-social skills particularly well. One longitudinal study found that children who played more pro-social games at the beginning of the school year were more likely to exhibit helpful behaviors later on in the year. Finally, let's look at five games that deliver powerful learning experiences. Remission is a video game that teaches sick children how to deal with cancer. In the game, the children control a nanobot that shoots cancer cells and manages the side effects of the treatment. A randomized control trial showed that children who played Remission significantly increased adherence to the treatment protocol and cancer-related knowledge. The game has since helped hundreds of thousands of young patients. The game Minecraft promotes creativity, collaboration, and problem-solving through trial and error. Players build their own world and alongside apply math and learn about shapes and geometry. Some do electrical engineering and build machines that run in the virtual world, and others explore human history. Its education edition gives teachers special control and access to a wide catalog of lessons. In democracy, players get to know the challenges of being a politician. They learn the basics of economics and discover how policies affect real people. They have to deal with difficult issues like immigration and unemployment, and then still try to win the majority support in the next election. The app BrainQuake allows students to learn math in a playful way and without using symbolic language. Controlled experiments showed improved math scores by 20% when third graders play the game for just 10 minutes per day, three days a week, for a month. The game was developed with the help of the popular math teacher, Keith Devlin. 
Its Education Edition allows teachers to monitor students' progress and creativity. The so called Harvard Root Beer Game is a team based business simulation in which players manage a factory, a distributor, a wholesaler, or a retailer of root beer. At the beginning of the game, the root beer isn't popular, but then it becomes a big hit. Each player now needs to decide what to do as they examine inventory, anticipate demand, and write orders. The game is played at top business schools because it teaches the importance of open communication and teamwork. What about you? What do you think about the up and downsides of playing video games for learning? And have you ever learned something in a video game that was later useful in real life? If you want to learn more about the topic, the people at G2A have developed a free online course especially designed for teachers. Just check it out at g2a.co slash academy, or read the description below for more details. Sprout's videos are published under the Creative Commons license. That means our videos are free and anyone can download, edit, and play them for personal use. And public schools, governments, and nonprofit organizations can also use them for training, online courses, or designing new curriculums. To help us stay independent and support our work, you can join our patrons and contribute. Just visit patreon.com/sprouts. Even $1 can make a difference.